Happy holidays. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, this is number seven in our series of Designing Your Life. Uh, for those that haven't seen the prior ones, we've had a lot of great events, uh, goal setting, uh, both personal and work, strategic health, your personal brand, strategic relationships in a virtual world, uh, DISC communications, which is a personality profile, uh, presenting with style, strategic learning last week. And uh, for this week, it's Vibe, bringing energy and synergy to your team. Um, this one is uh, gonna be very uh, Im impactful. I think we have uh, 25 items to cover. So we ask you to try and keep your comments concise or use the chat, but certainly happy to uh, cover uh, whatever you want. And uh, this is probably especially important in virtual uh, virtual selling world and COVID that we're in today, because you have to kind of get that impact. You know, the old, old, old days, you'd be able to shake somebody's hand impactfully and talk about what's in their office and kind of build a rapport and relationship. And now in this virtual world, it's uh, kind of all the more important to really show up with that uh, energy uh, that you have. And uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be co-hosting this with a, a good friend and executive coach, Tony Jerry. Uh, I like to call him the results guy, and he's uh, a strategist, but I think unlike a lot of uh, strategists or executive coaches, he actually helps with a lot of real actionable deliver deliverables, which you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see in the event here. So, Tony, thanks a lot, and uh, take it away. Hey guys, so this is the uh, book cover here, guys, uh, on Vibe, and to add to what Randy said, uh, over the last year or so, we've really been dissecting the whole idea about if someone brings energy or takes energy. And I think we would all agree that sometimes people pull energy from us. You guys agree with that, Bill? And then sometimes people give us energy. So when you're around certain people and they pour into you, uh, that's a great thing. Randy, if you think about people in your world, who pours into you? Tucker, who pours into you? Who, uh, when you hang around them, like, like when I get around Jesse, the guy behind the scenes, like he, he's like rolling I and mean, he's got the energy going. Do you guys feel that with him? Absolutely. Sometimes yeah. rolling a little too much, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rolling pretty fast for sure. <laughs> and so as we uh, wrote this book and we're almost finished writing it, uh, we divided the book into two different pieces. And uh, piece number one is about individuals. And, uh, and piece number two is about a company. So Phil, as you're watching this, uh, know that there's a whole nother segment. If you haven't seen the assessment yet uh, on like the whole company. So anybody that's like, running a whole organization, there's two halves of the book and we're just covering one half right now. Um, what I've done is I've gone through and kind of chunked it out. Uh, so we want to spike your awareness on vibe. Like uh, some people haven't really thought about it. Like, how's my energy? When I show up on the screen, do I bring energy to someone or not? So uh, raising your personal awareness, that's going to be a given. Uh, we want to give you the characteristics of what we came up with. Again, as Randy said, there's 25, a lot of content today. Um, there's more than 25, of course. Here's 25 we came up with. And if you think about yourself as a uh, salesperson or maybe as a leader, number three is we want to do our best to be able to help you uh, spike your energy uh, for the role that you play. The way we've got our hour divided benefits of Vibe, as we share the practices, the 25 are divided into another five. We'll hit the highlights and then close. Uh, the 25 are divided into brand, leadership, organization, how, or, how organized are you, communication and style. Again, my suggestion would be pick three or four of the, uh, of the 25 we're going to go through and you say, hey, there's something that I really need to work on. Uh, we think it helps you as a leader. We think it helps you as a, uh, as a synergizer and, of course, working as a high-performing team. Uh, the assessment was sent out, and it's available, Randy. That, that's set up right now, right, Tucker, where people can get it? If they yes. Yep. Yes, yep. they can get it you either. Go to, uh, um, sales, salescommunity.com and just go under the events, and each, each event has each, each one of the self-assessments. Yep. Anu, Anu, did you get this in our email? I did. Yes, thank you. I'm just checking to see. Patty, did you get it? Hi. Charlie, did you get it? So I didn't get it as an email. I got it from the website, Perfect. sales community. We're going over the left side today, okay? Individual and leadership. That's the side we're going over. Um, so why we need Vibe, I'm proposing, as Randy said, now that more than ever, as we don't see people as much, our energy is coming through 
people are more alone. They're not connected individually as much. Uh, so we say it's uh, even more important than ever to really have vibe. Uh, in fact, we put it all across our entire organizational building here. Uh, so when you come in our building, you see we've got vibe and we're, we're doing our very best to create an environment that stimulates that. And I ask you to think about that for yourself. Today, how many hours are we, uh, can you guys chat this in for a minute? How many hours are you on the phone doing, doing a, a web call in a given on an average workday? Let's look at there. There's six for Eric, five from Will. Keep throwing numbers in, guys. Five, four. So I think people are, are, would clearly say at least two or three, some as many as eight. Randy's like on the phone a lot. Uh, five, a new, thank you, thank you. 5.5, that's a calculated Austin for five. Uh, bottom line, four or five hours a day, we are on screen somewhere and oftentimes in the same place. So here's the next question. The environment that you're working out of, does that give you energy or take it from you? Uh, does it, uh, do you have enough lighting? Do you have enough background? Do you have your tools around you? Uh, is, it, uh, is it a place that you like to be? Because today you're investing a lot of time in that space. I was asking Randy earlier about the items behind his back there. And, uh, and you know, just think about your own environment. Is that something you need to work on so you're spiking your own vibe? I wrote a book, I read a book a few, several, uh, 10 or 12 years ago, read many, one of them that comes to mind here called The Biology of Success. And it really talked about how uh, you can use your environment to spike, if you will, your own energy. Uh, do you guys agree with that? Definitely. Yeah, I kind of miss going back into the office and just getting the energy from everybody. Yep. Like, you know, how you set things up can give or take away from your energy. So let me just encourage you as one takeaway before we dive into the 25. This is the first of the five. Each one will invest about, let's say, a minute or so in. We'll have a few comments, and then we'll, as Randy said, we'll be covering a lot of content. The first one under brand is, uh, are you open to growing? So when someone is asking you things like, hey, have you seen this, watched this, seen this model, checked out this URL, uh, looked at this new model, uh, are you a person that's constantly um, upgrading yourself? And, uh, you know, you could actually just kind of rate yourself. Are you open to really adding to your life? And if you are, fantastic. If you're not, we're proposing that you may not have the vibe that you could. Uh, who wants to comment on that first one? Open and innovative, open and growing. Anybody? Oh, yeah. Uh, Austin, you're doing the... Uh kind of been a, with a startup challenge. So you gotta be innovating every quarter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every 90 days I get to renew my contract to keep working, right? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, for me, I've, uh, I've always found, I've got a good fundamental, um, you know, ideology around like the Sandler sales concepts is like my foundation. But I mean, the world we live in is, is just so volatile, right? And dynamic. So you have to always be, being staying on top of it. And I think even some experimental stuff, you know, um, there's not really a recipe book anymore for how to be successful in prospecting and lead generation in this current environment. I mean, you've just got to, you've got to really uh, be willing to be creative and take some risks. That's, what I'm finding. That's good. You stimulated the thought, Austin. Thanks for doing that. Here's my thought. Chat it in guys. Uh, if you do a number for me, please. Uh, this is a dollar number. In the last 12 months, how many dollars have you invested in yourself being better? This is webinars, seminars, books, videos, conferences, coaching, uh, mentoring, anything that you've invested in yourself dollar-wise, what kind of dollars have you invested in yourself being better? We got a two grand in going. We got five, 500,000, $500 to a thousand. Several hundred dollars. Anybody else? Four grand. All right. So now here's the next question. Lots. Okay. There's one. All right. Here's the next question. <laughs> like when you think about that question, and I've asked it for about 10 years now all around the world, mostly in person. Then I follow up with this second question. Here's the second question. On a one to 10, 10 being the highest, how happy are you with the time and the money you're investing in yourself to be better. Like you're saying, man, I'm doing a great job being better and better, or so-so, or man, I need to work on that. 
So 10's high, like, man, you are really investing in yourself. And one's low, like, man, I need to jump it up a little bit. And I'm guessing because you're on our call today and you're part of the sales community, you would have a number that would be fairly up there, right? People invest in themselves, open and growing. Um, something that if you happen to be managing uh, any kind of sales team, those are good questions you might be asking your sales team members. How proactive are they in investing in themselves? So item number one, opening and growing. Let's go to number two. How much your wardrobe? And today wardrobes are different, right? Uh, people don't see your shoes much anymore. I guess they do some, right? But in the most cases, they're looking at what your top up, right? And so you think about your wardrobe, you think about your haircut, you think about your glasses, you think about the environment around you. Uh, what, what's showing up? And do you have energy when someone's showing up? Like if you took a picture right now and you go click and you saw all the people on the screen here and you say, which people and which environments really bring energy to me? And I'm just proposing that, uh, that people make, we all make impressions and people have a connection with your, uh, what they see on that screen. What do you think about that, Tugger? Uh, I'm, I'm laughing because I, you know, recently when quarantine started, um, you know, my girlfriend was giving me haircuts and using the buzzer and all that. And then uh, we moved recently. And after a couple of months, we've got this office space. She kind of, she finally came in. She was like, I'm, I'm kicking you out for the day. We got to put a, a rug in here. This is like the least homey environment I can even think of. So I, my, uh, my life team is definitely helping me out with some of these things for uh, bringing the vibe up. Anybody else? How you been doing on, on bumping your wardrobe and your environment over the last year with our new setting where half the time we're on the phone? Anybody else? Anybody got a best practice of what you're doing? You know, you know, Tony, I've got a, I got an opinion on this. So I used to wear suits five days a week because I was on an airplane, you know, constantly. And, and with the Zoom world, I found it's easier to connect being casual, right? Customers feel like you're more relatable. You come in wearing a suit, they're going to think, what the hell is wrong with you? Who wears a suit in their office, right? And so I found kind of getting more casual and, 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 Lowering that barrier has been more effective with my team and, and with customers. You know, I personally, when you said that, and we all do, is when we hear each other from Randy or I or anybody else, we reflect back on how it applies to ourselves. And I look back and I, I wore slacks maybe once in a year. And I show up now in, in black jeans almost always uh, in person. And uh, used to, I would really think about that. Now I don't even think about it. It's like, that's the way I'm going to show up. That's interesting. Anybody else comment on wardrobe and environment? Okay, let's go to number three. Um, how about your online presence? Uh, what percentage of the time when we're going to meet somebody, or we're going to sell something to somebody, do we check out their company or check them out online? I mean, it's got to be more than ever, right? Would everybody agree with that? A bigger number? Let me hit the check. Absolutely. Oh. It's 101. Uh, you don't want to walk in cold. And then, so then let's reverse that around. So have you looked at your own LinkedIn lately and seen if it's updated and does it bring energy to the table? If someone meets you on your LinkedIn before they meet you, what do they see? You know, um, is, your, is your information current? Do you have videos, pictures? Is it really thought through? So again, I don't think it's a heavy duty burden and I certainly am suggesting it's a good thing to have people have a good impression online before they actually meet you today. So I don't know. Uh, what's that? I just bring up while we're doing our uh, the prep for this, I never even thought of the whole Wikipedia thing. So I, I, I looked, uh, actually looked me up. And fortunately enough, there's nothing listed, which I don't know if that's good or bad. And then Tony, I looked you up. And you don't have anything listed too. So, uh, but Tony had said, which I didn't realize, I guess if there are something in Wikipedia that may be inappropriate or bad or you want to change, I guess there's a way you can go back and change it. So that was completely off my radar for what it's worth. And we want to keep pushing, Randy. Uh, every time that we do these, we want to say, what are we not thinking about that we could be? How about this one? Sharing accomplishments without being arrogant. Uh, testimonials, what people said about you. When you go to your LinkedIn and you look at what people have either said as a recommendation or they've said something and endorsed you, uh, you know, do you have three or 30 or 300 or more than the 500 or is it divided out now? I think between, what is it? 10 or 12 different categories. And I would suggest that, uh, that that's a great thing to have is a lot of great endorsements 
uh, when people look you up. Does anybody have a best practice on how you do that now? Anybody? I, I always stayed away from them, to be honest. I always thought, again, I, don't, I have no idea who has what on here, and you probably have a ton, so I don't want to offend you, but yeah, I, I found more times than not, a lot of the people that had a lot were the ones that were trying to kind of bolster themselves too much, but maybe that's more old school. Do we, when we check, do we look at it or not? What do we, what's, what's the deal today? When you look up someone's LinkedIn, what do you see? What do you look at? What matters? I like reading the, the bios that people write below their picture to kind okay. of give them a little summary and then, you know, their work is where they go to school, uh, what groups they're in, like what LinkedIn groups they're in, see if we have any commonalities there. Ah, got it. So you're looking for commonality. That's good. Hattie, what did you say? Content? What do you mean by that? Patty, are you there? I saw you. Yeah, chatting. I'm here. Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I, I, you hit on a huge button because I'm on LinkedIn probably four to five hours a day, every day. And the fact that people don't keep their LinkedIn profile updated just drives me absolutely crazy. But um, I look at content from the beginning to the end. Um, I also look at my connections. Uh, who do I know that they know? Um, it helps me a lot in terms of being able to vet someone on the back end. But uh, I always say to people, try to make your LinkedIn profile exactly what your resume would look like. It should be one and the same. Thanks, Patty. Appreciate that yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I, I always look at uh, connections. So it's a broad generalization, but uh, given kind of where I've been and what I do, if, if there's, you know, kind of 30 or less mutual connections, chances are the person maybe isn't active on LinkedIn or isn't as good or as strong versus somebody where frequently it will be, you know, three to 500 or more mutual connections. So that's a judging a book by the cover at a quick glance. Interesting. Anybody uh, else want to weigh in? Andy O'Brien just sent, me, sent a, a text on it too, look, looking to see uh, just kind of how many they're connected to, but kind of who, who they're also mutually connected to. And especially now with the, where you can do not just the first, but then get the seconds, you know, tight in there. That's a you know, great indicator. Did, uh, is LinkedIn uh, the absolute top? Is that the number one? Is there any others, any others I'm missing? I don't think so. Okay. Randy, this is Anu. Uh, quick question. Do you accept uh, LinkedIn requests from people you don't know? I'm curious because I, I'm constantly getting LinkedIn requests and I I sort of drawn a line for myself saying, if I don't know the person, if I've never met the person, if I've never talked to the person, I don't want to, I don't feel I should be connected to the person. Yeah, so when I was like, well, when I was a normal person, so when I was at HP, I would do that. But then what you find is when you run a recruiting business, it, it's helpful to know a lot of people. So <laughs> <laughs> basically, as long as it's not a recruiter or some obscure person from some obscure country, um, I, I typically accept. <laughs> You're funny, buddy. That's as authentic as I could be. <laughs> Good. All right, let's look at number five. Uh, let's see. Help me go to number five. There we go. Um, how about your attitude? Uh, when someone thinks about the times and the history that they've met with you, do they say, wow, this person always has a very positive outlook? has a very great uh, attitude about things. Um, I think people make a judgment on your energy based on your attitude. And so I would just propose, you know, are you a person that's really looking for adding value? Are you a person that's showing up smiling? Are you a person that has the, the, the gratitude uh, and you're constantly- Everybody just smiled when you said, you, I'm very bad at that, but when you say everybody smile, all of a sudden I see everybody smile. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, think about it. A lot of times where you have a serious face uh, and people are looking at her face for hours, you know, and yeah. you're sitting there, you're like, are you ever laughing? And, uh, you know, I even think, as you guys, most of you know, I give away the dollar bill thing. And I do that because I want to have the attitude of a spike in energy. I want to have a fun attitude. I want to have an attitude that people want to be on a call with me on a phone or in a room or on an event, you know? So anyway, attitudes one. So we got the first five. Uh, let's go to leadership now. We're going to go through six through 10. Uh, when people hang out with you, do they know that you're uh, goal oriented? That you have a strong vision of where you're going? Do they feel that? Are you congruent with your actions to get to that vision? Um, 
Are you looking for ways to, uh, to make all the stakeholders win uh, that are part of your world? So I believe people that are very goal oriented bring energy to, uh, to the world. Um, you know, I've, I've, obviously Randy and I know each other very well. And I remember over the years as I would show up in different times to coach him, he would have things written down and organized and he would pull his goals out. And it's always impressive to me the energy I would get out of his commitment to doing that. And, uh, you know, I just had a CEO leave uh, just an hour before we started our, uh, our meeting here. And I've been coaching this guy, Randy, for about five years. And his wife asked him, he said, are you going to, uh, uh, to do that photo thing again for Christmas for our family? And he says he spends or invests quite a few hours every year and takes like the best photographs and prints out thousands of them and cuts them up into little four by six sheets and makes like a little book out of it for his family. And, uh, and all that ties to the goals that he has for his family. And I'm like, that's cool. Like when people do that, uh, to me, that really brings energy that you're really pouring into the, the people around you. Anybody, uh, anybody got a, a goal item that you might share? Anything exciting on goals that you'd share you do that you think brings energy to the world? All right, side note, how many are writing enough goals? Like, I mean, like really push yourself to say, in 10 years, this is what I'd really like to see a perfect day look like. Like, has anybody ever done that? Like, that's pretty cool to do that. And, uh, and another piece, Randy and I were talking about in the future, maybe I do some more of my goal setting uh, items. And one of the things I've been teaching for years, Randy, you and I talked about it and took her in our prep, was the whole accomplishment thing. Like, if you're not writing down your accomplishments and really thinking through what were your goals and how did you accomplish them, then you don't reinforce goal setting to yourself. And I think all that connects back to the vibe or the energy that you have in life. Uh, how about your personal discipline? You know, do you show up on time? Uh, do you have high standards? Uh, you know, uh, do you live those standards? You know, if you say clean is your standard, look around and say, are you clean? Is your car clean? Like when people get into my car and they walk in and they go, oh, hey, this guy's standard is clean, a clean car. They're going to get vibe from getting in, in, in my car. Uh, I want my standards to be, you walk in my home, it's going to look pretty nice. It may not be perfect. It's going to look pretty, you walk in my office, it's going to look pretty nice. And I think all those standards kind of exhibit, um, like it says on the screen, you know, your own personal follow through. What about standards for a minute? Who can speak on that? Phil, you still on with us? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I think it's extremely important that we have a standard. It, that may not be the same as somebody else's standard, but you know we have a standard that we're going to live to, we're going to abide by. You know whether it be you know personal, whether it be like you said your office. Um, I, I take pride in uh, my wife taking care of our house. I mean it, it looks really nice all the time. That's cool. You know one of the things I've known Phil for a lot of time, a lot of years, and the guy his follow through, his discipline to follow through is is incredible. And I just, I think all those little standards that we pick up and people kind of, they make a judgment on us. Do we, are we bringing energy to the table, vibe to the table? And if we're fortunate enough, Phil, to have a spouse that is, uh, that is supporting that, that's a, I have the same thing. It's a fabulous thing. My, you know, I go to bed and I leave, uh, you know, crackers on the table and I get up the next morning, it's all clean. And I'm like, wow, that's nice. You know, I got a wife that, that is incredible with her discipline. Anyway, bottom line is, ask your own self, how's your standards? Are you living up to them? And are you personally displaying them every day uh, to where it brings uh, great wins? Um, you know, we talked about earlier, uh, and I've been talking about this for a long time, 20 years, about my belief in a high-performing team. Uh, you know, do, are you a team player? You know, and are you part of a, a group that's a, I mean, are you part of a team that's a group, a team, or a high-performing team? And I think you can ask yourself, are you bringing energy to your team? Are you pulling them up or pulling them down? And what do we want? We want to be able to attract people around us that bring energy, that have good accountability, that have good communication, that they follow through, say they, that they do what they say they're going to do. You know, Eloise is up every morning at, I don't know how early she's up, but she's up working with us usually uh, an hour before we even start, checking out emails, double checking stuff, making sure everything's set, seeing if there's any overlap. And that that high performing team energy is just, it's a great thing, you know? Um, anybody got somebody on your team you could brag about that's really, that brings great energy to your team? Anybody? 
<laughs> Tucker <What>? Shane. <laughs> Tucker for sure with us with uh, sales community. So. Oh yeah, a lot of, always positive. <laughs> I, I got one. I got one. Tony, my my uh, my East Coast rep on my East Coast rep. She's uh, super high energy. Does a fantastic job maintaining relationships. You know, is the one that's always putting together the Zoom happy hours and and candidly, just making that a success in itself is uh, is challenging, right? So that says a lot about a personality when you can get. A bunch of people who are more or less, you know, acquaintances together and and sit and drink and not make it awkward for an hour, right? Um, is always the one that the first one to find the, the information from, you know, either from the customer or from HP is one of our big distributors, and and you know she just is always on top of it. So I've got I've got one rep that's just a super high energy and uh, absolutely crushing it on the East Coast. Actually, Boston, Boston, Randy. You're neck of the woods. Perfect. You, you spiked a thought uh, for me. Here's a question for you. Uh, would you mind uh, everybody chatting it in? What do you think the advantages are to an individual that has vibe? Like that person you talked about, your rep? W what's the advantages? Type it in, please, guys, if you would. What's the advantages? When you have vibe, when you bring vibe to the world, what do you get? Do you get more friends? Yeah, of course, Eric. More opportunities. You sell more. Yeah. It's top in it, Phil. Bingo. Yep. Do you get, um, do you attract magnetism? There, I see that, right? Uh, customers receive you better? Okay. Everybody agrees. Vibe's important. Let's go to number nine. Clarity and focus. You guys see that above me? Look up above me. Clarity, focus, and execution, right? You know, how's your clarity and focus? If you have clarity and focus on where you're going, you know, when I talk to Randy, he's clear on where he's going. Uh, when people are focused, I mean, I even appreciate it when people kind of turn me down because they're focused. You know, I'm like going, man, that's impressive. You know, it's like, hey, can we trim the meeting down to 15 minutes? Like, I got three things. I'm like, that's cool. I, did, I, I love focus. I, uh, I ask her, all of us, how's our clarity and our focus? And number 10 is your flexibility. Uh, as you go through life, being rigid, kind of interesting, being flexible is interesting. You know, can you be flexible and still be focused? I would propose yes. Uh, how do you deal with change? Are you a person that can handle change? Uh, I studied a word two years ago called serendipity. Uh, I know we've all heard of it. If you've not really studied it, that might be an action you might want to do is study serendipity. And what I came around with is when, I, when a change happened and I wasn't sure if it was a good change or not, I looked at and say, I say to myself, you know, am I flexible to deal with it? And could this be serendipitous where pretty soon it turns out to be something better? And I re actually reframe my own self-talk. And I believe I bring better energy to the world by being able to do, do that. And at the same time, I like my routine. So it's not that I don't like having things in place and, and everything's working. So i put that out there for you personally. Any comments on flexibility? Do you like people that work for you that are flexible? Phil, how about you? When people were saying, yes, I got it. We'll make it happen. You know, when you need to make a twist. Yeah, because in, in my business, if uh, you're not flexible, um, you're going to be left behind. I mean, yep. we change quite often and quickly. Yep. And that's the life we all live today, really. You know, change. All right, let's go to number 11. The next section is organization. So let's look at each one of these. We've got five more. Efficiency. How many of you are impressed with people that are very efficient? Like, uh, can you think of anybody, Randy, that's on the phone right now uh, or on the, uh, on the call with us that's just like, you know, they, they, show, they make things happen. They're just efficient with their time, efficient with their energy, efficient with best practices. Anybody come to mind? Yeah, he's, uh, he, he's on mute, so he probably can't chime in, so it's a good opportunity to talk about him. Yeah, but uh, Andy O'Brien, he's uh, long, and also admire him for being basically the same, uh, same one or two companies for so long, but EMC... And then, uh, yeah, pivotable. Just you know, it's hard to survive long term in a lot of those uh, big tech environments. And uh, he did really well. And I think efficiency is one of the reasons why. Yep, I think efficiency attracts. It attracts wins, big wins. All right, number twelve. Uh, how about being organized? You know, when people um, look at the environment behind you, when you show up and they look at your uh, the way you lay things out at a table. You know, I used to do a lot of business, Randy, over in Japan. 
I had an office in, uh, in China and I spent a lot of time in Asia. And I would see people the way they would show up uh, in Asia. And it was quite impressive, especially in Japan where they would have everything kind of laid out like we do now on our screens. Has anybody noticed that some that you've done work in Asia where you see people like they've got everything organized for their meeting and it's like they're ready to crank. Anybody notice that? And it's just impressive, I think, when people show up and they're just like, boom, you got an hour meeting and they're going to make it happen. Uh, what level of organization is good enough? What's your standard? Like, if you look at my top 10 standards right now that we have when someone comes to work for me, um, I say that everything is organized every day and it's not like every other day and it's not like three days a week and it's not like on Thursdays. It's not like when I feel like it. It's like every day we have things organized and we reset in between phone calls. We reset in between meetings. We like things organized. My, my level of, of, uh, of organization on my standard list is like a 10. I want things to be organized. What's yours? And what should it be? And is that something you should work question, on? How do you do with the personality profiles that are polar opposites from that? Well, uh, I'm, I'm careful if I hire them, first off. And, and however, there are creative people that are exceptionally, uh, exceptionally good at certain things. And so sometimes you got to manage around it and managing around it could be, you could give them technology to support them. You can give them an assistant to support them. You can give them processes to support them. So there's two or three things there. Usually there's three buckets. It's uh, having people they can delegate to, to make sure it happens uh, to the technology and threes of processes. Those are the big three. Tony, you know. the challenge is like you mentioned the uh, Asia. I remember working with my teams in Japan and extremely organized, fantastically well organized. They knew exactly what they wanted to accomplish in a meeting. Fantastic. However, no flexibility whatsoever. So sometimes those two run into a challenge with each other. And that was my biggest frustration with my with my Japanese team at the time. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they're doing this and it's not always a yes, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Tony, just, Tony, okay, I got, go sorry, ahead. Tony, I just got a question um, with regards to this list of top 10 standards you have. I mean, when you're sort of nailing down those non-negotiables uh, for you and for your team that you're building, you know, how do you how do you sort of blend that with, you know, wanting to create a, a diverse group of individuals and, and, and kind of tap into, you know, the creativity of, of different perspectives? Is it can you just speak to how you really isolate and nail down those non-negotiables? Yes, I can. So I have two sets of standards uh, that, I, that I preach and teach and I live by myself. One is my personal standards. And I have 12 specific things that I live by every day that I have decided that those are my big 12. And then the 10 that I'm talking about culturally are the things that we've said and organizationally, this is, the, this is the standards I'd like to attract to. Would you like to see the list? Because it's up on the screen. So the first thing that I ask people to do is to think about our mantra. When you come to work for my firm is we want to constantly give you more than you expect. And we want to make every person, place, or thing better. Uh, I ask people as a personality-based business to save me time, number one. Number two, I want to constantly improve and work on correction of errors. And see what I've said, number three, keep all things clean and organized. It adds to our brand. Uh, we want to do list making. We want to over-communicate. We want to focus. We want to do favors in advance so people are really seeing that our Kindness, caring, and serving is coming out. We want to be proactive and do things immediately, and we want to have a team approach. So let's go back to your specific question. What I attempt to do is attract people that aren't going to uh, uh, to have a clash with these. When I say, man, we want to be organized, and it's just like impossible for them to be organized or to be on time, I know it's probably not going to work for me. So attracting the people, and then I want to be able to polish people into that. You know, if, if a person is pretty good in most areas, but they need to work on things, as a mentor, I want to help them be better. So however long they work with me, and they may work with me for a long time, I want them to, uh, to be better. So um, hopefully that answers the that's, question. That's helpful, Tony. Thank you. Uh, let's go to 13 now. Let's see. 13, the arsenal. Uh, you know what I believe is I believe that people uh, have the discipline to build an arsenal. Everybody has some. These are stories and case studies and examples and things that you have in your mind. You have electronic arsenal, things you have on your phone, and you have things that you have. Like, for example, it's impressive to me when I'm talking to somebody and they can pull up on their phone and on their photo album, uh, on their phone, they can pull something up, send it to me, text it to me and say, hey, here's a And all of a sudden I'm going, wow, that person's got some energy because they had the discipline to build that, that tool to be able to show. 
you know, a hard copy arsenal can be transferred to an electronic arsenal. Uh, can you get to stuff quickly? So I'm just proposing, I'm proposing that you always look for ways to build your arsenal and you ask yourself, is your arsenal big enough? You know, who has a big arsenal on the phone with us today? Anybody really work hard or work, not hard, really work focused building a great arsenal that you can share and use and, and leverage? Going once. You have more than all of us combined. Well, you know why, Randy? You know the history? Can I tell yeah. you the history? Here's what happened to me. In the 90s, I had a tier two supply company and I supported eight major agencies. I, I supported Bozell, Omnicom, Business Incentives, Imagination out of London, Visual Services, Rap Collins, Carabiner. There was eight of them. And what I saw is I saw they weren't disciplined enough to save all their best practices. And I thought, wow, I got, I'm able to work with eight great agencies as a kid at the time. And I thought if I would save all those best practices, how valuable could I be You know, 20 and 30 years from now? And I just encourage everybody, you think about it. When people ask for something, if you can give it to them, pop it up on the screen, just like we did with the 10 uh, standards, I think that you bring energy to the table. So again, that could be a takeaway for some people in the line, especially leaders, building a great arsenal. You want to sell great, build an arsenal. Show people, help people. All right, how about on your life team? Let's go to number four. I think it's going to show up in a second. Yep. Who's on your life team really matters. Uh, the key people around you, you know, uh, help you get stuff done. In fact, uh, my tax professional has been with me for 29 years, and I oftentimes brag on him, and then people want to meet him. I connect the dots, and then they're thanking me for connecting him. So I think that all of your stakeholders uh, can, bring, uh, a value, can bring value to your life, of course, and then can bring value to others as well. And people that, are, that have attracted great life team members that are willing to share them, uh, I think you bring energy to your customers, you know, to your clients. Uh, number 15 is your pace. Uh, you know, how energized are you? Do you get up and get things going quickly? Uh, although there is kind of an interesting twist I'll share with you on this one on getting up early. Uh, and I've touched on it a little bit, but not a lot, is I oftentimes will lay in bed for five or 10 minutes before I get up and I stay in the uh, uh, alpha state, uh, which is a state you can really think and solve problems. And uh, then I get up and I start rolling. So I, I don't just immediately get up and and energize myself and roll. I sit and think for a minute about the day and I look for creative solutions. And oftentimes that, uh, that helps me solve uh, issues and problems. And if you're not doing that, I encourage you study it and do it. Our energized and fast paced, we all see people that like move, you know, like they get up and get it done. And it, it's a reflection on your, on your energy. So think about your pace. And again, I'm not saying all 25 of these are for everybody. And I'm not saying that, uh, that there's absolutes. In fact, there's not absolutes. There's, these are great things to be thinking about. Again, the objective is to be able to, uh, to pick three or four at the end of our uh, hour together and say those I can work on. Uh, presentations and meeting, I think everybody knows I've written a jillion books on these. Uh, how do you hold a meeting? Are you, are you on time? Do you finish on time? Do you start on time? And here's one that I like to really point out on number three is do your objectives get accomplished by your agenda? A lot of people... They start with the agenda, then they go to the objectives or never go to the objectives. And I believe people that have good meetings and good presentations have a good set of objectives and the agenda supports the objectives. Um, so having your meetings and, you know, sometimes I finished a meeting a little bit early uh, today and I, and I just, I think when you can finish meetings early and accomplish the objectives, you give energy back to people, right? They're going, wow, you know, you just gave me back eight minutes or 10 or 12 or 20, 30 minutes of my, of my day of my calendar. What do you guys think about people that uh, hold good meetings? Does it impress you when they hold a good meeting? That's why I'm here. It, you're, about, you're on time, you're on, on, on topic, and uh, you're moving quickly. That's great. What about when your meetings uh, drag out? I mean, even if you're selling in a meeting, you're selling to a group, and you're not efficient, and you're not effective, you may not be bringing the energy to your prospect as you could. So be thinking about that for you or your team. All right, let's go to the next one, communication. And under communication, let's look at uh, listening and speaking. Uh, I've spoken this a little bit before. Let me just remind you. My thinking is taking good notes is important. Uh, a lot of people don't take the notes that they could. When people see you taking notes, that's a great thing. Uh, number 18, um, timely and prepared. Uh, like being able to be briefed and in the know, I think is impressive to people. 
especially when you're bringing it to your customers, prospects, your clients, uh, when you give them value because you've, uh, you're in the know, uh, you study the news, you're prepared to help them. I think that's a real positive uh, reflection on a person's brand. Um, how about this one? Are you communication your own meeting effectiveness? Are you communicate? Are you uh, taking communication and constantly saying, how can I be more effective? You know, in today's world, part of that effectiveness is things like this, right? Do you have a light that's shining on you, right? Do you have windows that are too bright? Like the way you communicate, I'm like, I'm wanting people to critique me as the way they see me on screen. What can I do to be better? Is the angle right? Am I too high? Right now I have a I have this little device here. Can you see a device? that lifts the, uh, the computer up so I can have more of a straight on shot instead of looking at my nose. Like all those things can matter. And in improving your communication, are you critiquing your online presence? That could be a takeaway uh, for some of us today. Let's go to number 20. Another way we communicate, of course, today is by email and text. And in fact, maybe one of the biggest ways. And what I found is a lot of people have never studied, been trained or coached into really how to be good at emailing and texting. You've just kind of done it over time. Uh, a lot of people get stuck in paragraphs versus bullets. Randy, do you like bullets or paragraphs? <laughs> bullets. <laughs> How many like a long, long book, or you like someone that's taking the time to knock it back down to just a few bullets, right? Look at Phil. He's like, don't be sending me an L book. No, I, you know, I want the bullets, right? And just think about it. Sometimes it does take a few extra moments on your own part to be able to be efficient. I talk about like numbering things. Like if you got three questions, Email and say, I got three questions. One, two, three, and number them. Don't just stick it all in a paragraph, you know? All those things. Cliff, could... What's Cliff's that? my favorite friend. What's that? Cliff is my favorite friend. Cliff notes. <laughs> Love it, man. Give me the bottom line and then give me more details if I want it. All right, let's move into our last segment. Um, buttoned up and prepared, everything in its place. Uh, it kind of overlaps with being organized. Uh, I think that that... Um, that when we're a leader or individually as a whole, you know, people are seeing that. Uh, on our personal style, let's look at a couple things here. Uh, are we calm? Like things happen. Like, you know, I hate it when, when I get frustrated and I'm not calm. Uh, obviously you're, you're reflecting a brand that, that is not good. I, I really want to be able to be in check with my own uh, calmness, with my attitude. You're smiling on that one. What's up, Phil? Hey, too many times uh, external factors, whether it's something right outside my office door or something outside or another company uh, calling in or something changes uh, that calm attitude and you got to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's one I'm constantly working on myself. 23. Let's go to the next one. A strategic presence. Um, you know, when you show up, how you sit in your chair. I mean, all those pieces play into your presence. Um, the clothes, the watch you wear, like uh, the glasses that you pick, all those things uh, people make a judgment on. And do you show up stylish? Do you show up uh, uh, in a way that people go, wow, uh, that person's got their act together. And I encourage us to think about strategic presence as a uh, first impression. This is one I added when we came back and edited this, is I think if you show up healthy, uh, that that gives a lot of energy. What do you guys think about that one? I like it, Tony. Um, you got the air pointing towards spiritual. Uh, you said when you wake up, uh, you, you sit there for a little bit. I've got a prayer closet that I go to every single morning. Wow. Wow. Great discipline. Great discipline. Great discipline. Anybody else? Comments? I think it's important. I think it's, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rick. Sorry. I was going to say, I think it's important that even when you're not feeling your best, let's say physically, and someone says to you, how are you doing to really bite your tongue and not share with them that you may not be physically your best. I think that's a kind of a, a good white lie to be able to say, I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, how are you doing? Because there's no, I don't see there's any benefit in, uh, in really, oh, it, sometimes you need to mask exactly how you're feeling spiritually or physically. Uh, because there's no reason to take the other person down. The temptation may be, well, I know that person. Let me tell them that, you know, I have a backache or whatever. I, again, uh, I, I sort of learned that a long time ago. You know, what I do, Rick, is I use that. Uh, I'm getting better and better. There was Tom Hopkins once said something. I think it was Zig Ziglar. I'm outstanding and improving. <laughs> That's good. 
<laughs> How about this one? When you uh, first meet someone, Randy, and someone says, hi, and saying, good to meet you, I always say, good to see you. Because what if you met him before, right? That's it's, a good one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Tied on with Rick, I uh, speak at a, a friend's BC class every uh, uh, spring semester, and I go around, and I make him shake hands, and I say, how you doing? And nobody ever says, to Rick's point, great. And they said, doesn't matter. Just say great. So it's easy to remember. How are you doing? Great. Like, okay, <laughs> how do you feel when somebody else says great versus almost, you know, you know, outstanding, obviously anything positive, but you know, that's, you know, that's the epitome of vibe, how right away it's that first impression. Number 25, happy and fun. Fun factor matters, right? Be happy, tell a joke, egg people on. If other people are happy, if other people have a natural gift to get people to laugh, you know, let them do it, egg them on, right? And if people are laughing, people are more energized being around you. All right, so let's move into our highlights. Uh, Eloise prepared a few of us, just as a few reminders. Uh, no energy, no action. Uh, Vibe is about pouring energy into others and to other organizations. Are you intentional about the brand that you bring to the table, including the brand on the web, brand in your meetings, like your brand everywhere? Uh, to be a strong leader, you know, do you have good standards? Those are standards for your organization and standards for yourself. Do you really promote accountability, trust, communication? Uh, are you constantly looking at how to be more efficient? Uh, efficiency is actually effectiveness and efficiency uh, is prized in the world today. Um, are you striving to improve uh, everywhere, including your communication and uh, things like your health? Like, are you showing up really in a, in a vibrant, um, healthy mode? So let's go through, uh, Randy, why don't you pick on a few people and just see which one stood out. We'll see, uh, and they could be the same one or different ones. I just would be really curious. This is the first uh, time that I've delivered this because the book's not quite written yet. And, uh, and so I'd be real curious of what stood out to people. So Randy, you wanna pick on some people? Sure, and um, as always in the chat, if you can uh, just kind of comment any feedback, uh, definitely appreciate it. So as, as we're going through this, if you can uh, make any comments in there, that would be uh, fantastic. Uh, since I was picking on him before, uh, Austin, Okay, always pick on me, Randy. Um, you know, so I mean, I think for me, the thing that that really stood out is this the concept of vibe, uh, especially with the uh, the current way that we're all working, right? I mean, it's easy to get so caught up in in you know Zoom overload and and the whirlwind, right? So if you guys are familiar with the the 4DX principles of uh, uh, you know the the B hags on that, right? One of their the, the key concept to talk about is the whirlwind and you've only got like the first, you know, hour and a half of your day to actually control what you're doing. And it's so easy to get caught up into that. You kind of, you know, begin to get, you know, mundane and focused on, I just got to execute, execute, execute and forget about how important the energy is both in for your own, you know, mental well being, right. You know, uh, and, and for the people that you're associating with. And I do think there's a fine line between, at least in person, I mean, it's still kind of weird over Zoom, but it, there is a fine line between being too energetic and still having executive presence, presence, right? I think if, you know, there, there's, if you're, if you have too much energy, you're too over the board, smiling and bubbly, a lot of times it's perceived as being green, right? Um, and so you kind of have to walk that line of, I've got positive energy, but I'm still experienced and have enough to uh, wherewithal to make, make things happen. You know, yeah, I think, yeah, it's a fine line to In the closing of the book, I think I want to talk about that genuineness. That's a good one for me. Thank you, because we haven't finished the close yet. That's good. Randy, who do you want to pick on next? Uh, to anybody ever go on the top of my screen here, Phil? I just put it in the chat, but you know, being a strong leader, leader and modeling that, you know, showing your team. Uh, what that standard needs to be, what the behavior needs to be, and, and modeling it yourself, and then they learn from that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Will? Yeah, you guys can hear me. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, I just, I can't thank you, Randy and Tony, enough. I mean, Tony, for bringing attention to this topic. I think it's definitely one that uh, hits on a nerve right now for a lot of us, but you've really addressed it very comprehensively and there's so much practical 
application just in the content that we've covered today. So I'm just very excited to, to you know, implement a lot of the, the disciplines and you know, just help to, through what you've walked through today, you've definitely opened my eyes to specific areas where I want to optimize my vibe. Um, so I appreciate you for that. Cool. Appreciate that. Sound like I need to type that up, put it on the back of the book cover. Hey, just shoot me an email, Tony. I'll draft something up for you. <laughs> Love it. And this, is, this is Austin. Who was that? That was Will. Will Dion. Thank you, Will. Nice. And uh, I didn't realize he was on. Sal? You're mute. I don't know if you're just listening. Yeah, no, I'm here. It was funny. I, I was just sitting here thinking I had a conversation with someone the other day and I, and I said, how you, how you doing today? And the, the answer that came back was something so mundane, like fine. And I was like, wow. And they, it was just the two of us getting, getting ready to kick off. I said, wow, I hope you don't bring that low energy to this meeting. Otherwise we're not going to get anywhere. And I kind of called them out on it. It was, it was, we had sort of a funny conversation, but I was like, yeah, that, that you got to think about how you answer that question with other people on the phone. It was sort of an, an, a, a definitely a uh, an eye opener for me. It was just as you were talking about it, it sort of brought back that memory. Awesome, great. And again, in the chat, if you guys can uh, put comments in, and what we more specifically like to do is, I'll say testimonials, and we we post them on the site. So good comments get posted uh, on, on the site there for our testimonials. Um, Anu. Yeah, I was just thinking about my old days when I went through IBM training school. Uh, I, I remember the importance of the vibe, the importance of walking into the client's office and creating that great first impression. Someone that your client wanted to talk to and wanted to learn from and wanted to network with. So the vibe was essential. And in this new world that we're living in with uh, Zoom and uh, it, it changes the way we have to approach it. And it's not that it's, it's, it's more important than it was before, but how you go about it, it really needs some thought consideration, especially for those of us that are maybe a little bit newer to this approach. So uh, absolutely, absolutely critical. And uh, I think back to uh, my old IBM training days and, and talking about first impressions are everything. A yep. couple more. Uh, Charles? Uh, what I take away is the point you made as far as the flexibility and being able to adapt to change, particularly nowadays, I think it's important because we don't know, you know, what's going to happen from day to day. And I think uh, if you're able to do that effectively, then uh, oftentimes an opportunity will present itself and uh, you're that much more ahead of the game. Yep, for sure. Thanks, Charles. Randy, we got about two more minutes. You want to pull a wrap or grab one more person? Sure. Uh, Tiger? Yeah, I think to add to that, just, you know, number eight really hits home, managing your health and mental state to remain calm. I think in in this Zoom world that we're living in, every every day can sort of feel like Groundhog Day for to a certain degree. And, you know, there are certain little things that can sort of aggravate you or, you know, have the ability to sort of change your attitude uh, at the drop of a dime. So sort of being, being self-aware and just sort of managing, uh, you know, that mental state and, and remaining calm uh, sort of plays a big part in all of this. That's great. All right. Well, appreciate it. Um, yeah, as a reminder, we've got the prior six sessions are all uh, loaded on the salescommunity.com website. Uh, the next one's January 5th, Selling from Home and uh, Prepping for Virtual Meetings. And uh, I didn't get a chance to say in this session, but uh, the things that Tony does to prepare ahead of time for agendas, note takers, recap after the fact, uh, for sure is the best practice that I've learned a lot from. And then uh, January 19th, we're going to be summarizing uh, all this, all the series, which should be really exciting. And we're going to be announcing another follow-on kind of nine sessions to keep us going throughout uh, uh, 2021. And I know several of you are members. And for those that uh, are not, you know, feel free to check out salescommunity.com. We still have the 30 day free trial going. And for those that are members,